Hi, boys and girls. I got some new potato chips. They're called Haunted Ghost Pepper. Haunted Ghost Pepper. We're going to see if they have any heat at all. The childproof bags. Looks like a Dorito to me. It's a trace of something, but just a trace. Well, they're not hot. I don't get it. People say, it's hot. It could burn my face off. Okay. They're never hot. Red vines. Yay. That's called edible. So we had red vibes and haunted ghost pepper. I'd say that ghost pepper it was dead. So I'll be back. Hi everybody, I'm on my way to Salt Lake to, if I don't get run over, I'm on my way to Salt Lake to pick up some solar panels. We found uh, some solar panels, they're a discontinued model on sale for a pretty good price, 265 watt panels for $190 each. That's where I'm going. I'll 
stop this video for now and we'll go from there. Bye bye. Figure out how to shut this off again. Hi, I got, uh, let's see if I can bring them up here. I got some 10 inch cutting blades, wire, marking paint, and connector. And back there are four solar panels. I hope you can see them. That uh, guy there is called Solar Wholesale in Salt Lake City. Really a very decent place. They had a lot, a lot of really cool stuff. And I think I'll probably be back. He gave me uh, whole bunch of uh, uh, brackets that I much needed. Really a super nice guy. I was impressed and I don't impress easy. But uh, we got the panels and uh, have a little over two kilowatts of uh, panels now which is good. About two kilowatts even. Now I have to find Somewhere out there. Oh, this is Lowe's, by the way. Not my favorite place, but they had what I needed. But somewhere out there, in all of that, is a uh, office supply, office depot, where I can get my. Um, I need a whiteboard. I want to make a whiteboard so I can write out everything. But that'll be it for the moment. Now off to whatever that place is. Okay, I got uh, four more pieces of steel here to cut. They're going to be cut to, three of them will be cut to 68 and 38. The remaining piece on that will be a leg. And then the fourth one will be cut to three pieces of um, 38. So all of that combined with what I've already cut will give me enough for eight panels. We have eight panels so far. So here we go. I gotta put the saw together and get everything out of the shed and start doing some cutting. Hey, right, got my cutoff saw all set up, and uh, that's the first cut right there at 68 inches. Um, we will see if this works any better. I hope it does. One of the things you want to do if you're doing this is you have to line up, make sure you're not cutting through these holes because you're going to need those holes when you go to put this thing together. So make sure you don't cut through the holes. Uh, everything is measured here in such a way that I won't cut the holes and it's going to work out pretty good. So let me do this first cut and I'll be back. If that went through with a lot less effort than I had to use the other day. Um, I kind of need a saw horse on the other end of this because it's loose. But you see these edges, they're razor sharp. So I'm going to use my C-Map here to kind of wear them off a little bit. Still going to be sharp down there, but not like it was. So there's my first cut, 68 inches. I'm proud of myself. I went a lot less effort, a lot less effort than I had to use the other day when I did this. So the next cut is going to be 38 inches. Um, the reason I say I need another saw horse or to get it down lower is because that end down there is heavy. So if I lift this end off, the whole thing's going to tip over. Don't want that to happen. So let me get these cut and we'll go from there. I'm having fun. Okay. There's uh, about one and a half all cut. The long section is for the sides. 
and that shorter section is for the top and bottom and that really short section is going to be the top leg and I got quite a bit of metal here this is fun I'm having a ball doing this uh, one absolute absolute thing you want to make sure to do when you're cutting anything like this with a power tool of any kind or even a tool of any kind is uh, wear some safety glasses believe me I have gotten metal in my eyes and it's not comfortable at all uh, but that's how I'm doing this I'll lay that out on the ground here in a little bit show you how it's going together and what's going where and then I have my whiteboard in there inside and I'll uh, draw out the dimensions for these particular solar panels I kind of think that most solar panels are going to be about the same dimension, but I'm not 100% sure. But for the ones like what I'm doing, I'll give you the dimensions too. Uh, I've got two different brands of solar panels here going in. And uh, it's going to come out pretty nice, I think. So let me finish the. I'll take off the lens cap. Okay, this is how they're going to look. Uh, upside down. This is upside down, but this is how they're going to look. So there'll be a metal strap. It's a pretty heavy metal strap going across that where it all bolts together. The solar panels will be on the other side. Like I say, this is upside down. And uh, this would be an end. This would be at one end of the house. And then they just go on across like this. I built this in such a way that it's modular. On the ends, bottom ends, there's going to be a barn door hinge. On the top, there'll be a barn door hinge. So I can adjust this up and down. Uh, there won't be a whole lot of angle, but there'll be a little bit more angle than there would be if it was just flat on the roof. Now this piece is the leg, and it's going to go, each leg will go here, on the top end. So that's kind of how it's going to go, and then there'll be a bracket for it. Uh, I screwed up and cut that fourth piece I was talking about. Instead of three 38 inch pieces, I cut it in 68, 38, and the leg. So I ended up walking back over to Chirayu and buying one more piece, which is fine because I'll be using that next piece. But look at the price I got. These things are $21. A, se a section everywhere else. Now these have been on the shelf for a while. But uh, that's the basic frame. And uh, the solar panels will be the, uh, on the other side. Like I say, this is the bottom. And then I'll have brackets for wiring and all that stuff also. I kind of found out that if you shop, you can find the regular solar panel brackets for a heck of a lot cheaper than what I paid for this. And uh, you just have to shop and find it. The company that I was at yesterday, um, Solar Wholesale in Salt Lake has them. And they're cheaper and easier to use than what I've got here. So, but that's going to be it for this video. I am planning on being in uh, uh, New Mexico next week on Tuesday so I'll probably start work on this on Wednesday maybe work on it Wednesday and Thursday and come home Friday but I need to get some electricity in that and that'll make me real happy if I can get that done I need the uh, water tank buried and I don't know if the hole for that's been buried or not or been dug yet but I may have to dig it by hand I don't know 
bunk it with Jamestown there and find out. But anyhow, that's where I'm at. And the next video will probably be next week. So y'all have fun out there. Okay, I'm going to try and uh, explain all of this. And the panels are 39 and 3 quarter inches wide. So the panels being that wide, let's see. Okay, they're 39 and 3 quarter inches wide and 30, 65 and 7 eighths inches high. I use 10. The sticks of, of uh, Super Strut are 10 feet long. I cut five pieces. This is for four panels, just for four panels. Five pieces at 68 inches and uh, 38 inches, leaving a short piece left over. So here is the short piece, there's the 38, and there's the 65. That's five pieces. Then one piece at 38 inches, 38 inches, and 38 inches. If you cut it like that, this is all you have left over. That's your spare piece. That's the last piece. That's all the waste you have for four panels. You're going to use two. This is, this is modular. I built this in a modular form so that I can put one panel, two panels, however panels I need. I'm eventually going to have 14 panels. But this is built in a modular form so that I can just add as I go. The roof I have, this is the south facing part of the roof. Uh, you know, they've got the north facing part over here, but I didn't draw that in. It's going to have 14 panels on it when I'm done. So, you're going to use two 90s. There's a 90 there and a 90 there. You're going to use eight straight pieces. This is just for four panels. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The 90s are built like that with four holes. And they'll just, you can see pretty well where they're going to go. And the straight pieces, this is the bolt pattern for the straight pieces. You have your short pieces here and your 68 inch piece there. So you have one one bolt, one bolt, and two bolts. Now you can stagger that any way you want when you put it on, put them up. Your panels are going to lock in. These are a center clamp diagram. The panel will be there and the panel will be here. They'll be the center panels, I'm going to use 3 8 inch bolts, and there'll be an oversized washer on top and an oversized washer on the bottom. They'll clamp down on the panels. There'll be a half inch bolt on the ends. You can see that it'll clamp onto the panel. There's your, your super strut in the form. There'll be a bolt right here. And the top bolt will be, a, or washer rather, will be a double washer when the bottom washer is bent down at a 45 degree angle. Now that will keep the bolt from, it'll be shaped like this, it'll keep the washer from folding over like this. It'll be up against the bolt. And you can actually buy um, uh, clamps for those if you look hard enough. You can find them on Amazon, but I'm just going to use the washers. I'm going to Loctite all the bolts. All the bolts will be Loctited. So this will be my bolt pattern up here. It will be bolt, bolt, or rather clamp, the, the clamps down here. These will be my bolts. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. These are the end clamps. These are the end clamps, end clamp, center clamp, center clamp, center clamp, center, center clamp. And I'll just keep going like that until I'm done. Um, this is the pattern. There's your 90, there's your 90, there's a straight, 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 straight. Just like that. You want to torque those clamps to no more than 10 foot-pounds 
or 120 inch pounds. Check with the uh, manufacturer of your panels to make sure that's plenty. Uh, if you go up more than that on most panels, you'll break the glass. You don't want to do that. Um, but that's what the center clamps look like, and that's what the end clamps will look like. You're going to use two oversized washers on, on the top. One of them will be folded down. The bottom washer will be folded down, and there will be another oversized washer here. So, this is what your super strut looks like. About one and a half by one and a half inches. On my situation, I've got 14 panels, so I've got enough now for eight panels. I've got enough metal cut for eight panels. Actually, I have enough metal cut for nine panels, but I don't have nine panels, so these are what's going to be put on the roof. I figured out that there'll be 0.375 inches between each panel because there'll be a 3 8 bolt here. The end bolts, I didn't know if I said this, they're going to be half inch bolts. All these will be half inch. So this super strut on this end is going to stick out one inch from the edge of the panel. These, there'll be three eighths of an inch between each panel. That's 0.375 inches between each panel all the way to the end. So uh, my, my roof is 624 inches wide. So I'm going to end up with 33.5 inches at the end of each at each end of the roof. That's really all there is to it. A um, little bit of math involved if you want to get it all in there correctly the way you want it. But this is my plan, what I'm going to do. When you're cutting that super strut, make sure that you don't cut through the holes. Cut between the, the holes because you're going to need those holes for your bolts. And it's just really, really, really important that you don't over, over torque your... Um, your uh, bolts. And I'm going to use Loctite on everything. Every bolt in here is going to be Loctite. Um, what I'm going to do here, since I'll be doing a lot of this by myself, is I'll assemble one panel section by itself without the panel. The panel won't be included. But I'll, in I'll assemble one piece of the super strut, get it all put together, and uh, carry that up on the roof by itself. I don't have in this diagram the type of hinges that I'm going to use, but they look like they're a long hinge. They're barn door hinges, what they are. They're 10 inches. I measured these earlier. And they have a stud here. And the other end, ha it looks like this and they're 10 inches. The 10 inches um, actually this piece here slides onto that and I'll alternate it. One will be this way and one will be that way so that they'll lock into place. But the 10 inches actually match the super strut bolt holes and that's important. I haven't put on here how I'm going to do the back part yet as far as the upper roof part but they're this section here is going to be the leg, and it'll be up here on this end, and it'll use something similar to that. So that's basically how I'm doing it, and uh, wish me luck on this. I'll be down in New Mexico probably Tuesday, and we'll get this thing started. Uh, got a lot of work to do down there. I'd like to have it up and running before the uh, Rio Doso motorcycle ride. There's a meet down there in Rio Doso, and I want to go to that. Sue wants to go to that. So hopefully we'll have some electricity in there by that time. I'm looking into the salt batteries. I watched a video on those today, and they're really interesting. But that's my whiteboard. That's pretty much exactly how I'm going to be doing it. 
and uh, we'll just go from there. Hope it all works out. And uh, I'll shut this video off for the moment, I think, maybe, if I figure out.